hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Luke. Um, this is my presentation with the Trend REU. Um, my mentor is Mark Swizdek, and this is magnetic reconnection on a climb model. All right, so first off, what is magnetic reconnection? Well, it's a process in plasma physics where magnetic field lines will come from different regions. They bend, they break, and they reconnect to the side. Um, the process converts magnetic energy to uh, kinetic and thermal energy when uh, the magnetic tension and pressure drive everything to the sides. All right, so where can it be found? So here are just two examples. Um, to the left, we have solar flares where you can see magnetic reconnection occurring. And to the right, you can see um, both where the solar wind hits Earth's uh, magnetosphere and where um, the magnetic field lines reconnect at the end. Um, so why do we want to study magnetic reconnection? Well, there are multiple things we can study it at. Uh, first off, we have like astrophysical phenomena. So like black hole accretion disks, uh, galactic and extragalactic jets, et cetera. Um, we care about how the sun's solar wind and all the particles in it uh, hits Earth's uh, atmosphere. So like aurora borealis and stuff like that. Um, it's important in fusion research where we want to um, minimize magnetic reconnection to improve its efficiency. And finally, um, we care about all the particles it emits because um, they're pretty interesting to see how like the magnetic reconnection drives them out. So, um, so how do we model this? We use a process known as particle and cell simulation or PIC simulations. We track individual particles, so up to hundreds of billions of them, on a Lagrangian frame while we treat the electromagnetic fields they have on a grid. So um, we use uh, I Fort Fortran and IDL on the NERSC Perlmutter supercomputer to simulate this because we have so many particles to simulate. Um, here's a bit more about how the simulation works. Yeah. So we have four steps. Um, first, we solve the first two equations for a uh, position of velocity on every single particle. And then we sum up all the particles to calculate the current density, J, on the grid. We use the next two equations to solve the equations of the electromagnetic fields on the grid. And then we calculate the electric and uh, magnetic fields on each particle. So let's talk about boundary conditions. Um, we will talk about two popular ones first. So first off, um, we have the GEM run, the GEM challenge run, or the geospace environmental modeling run. It consists of one rectangular sheet pictured here. Well, here's a square, but same thing. Um, it's sealed off by hard conducting boundaries on the top and bottom. Uh, um, it's computationally cheap but the disadvantage is it's not periodic. The next run is the double sheet run. So now to ensure periodicity, we have two rectangular sheets. It's fully periodic, and you can think of it as topologically mapping to a torus or a donut, where you connect the top and the bottom, and then you wrap the sides around. However, this requires two sheets, and when each sheet has so many particles, it can be really com computationally expensive. So, our idea is the Klein bottle. So we want to make one sheet, which is computationally cheap, periodic. And how do we do this? We're going to map it to the topology of a Klein bottle. Um, Klein bottle is a two-dimensional manifold that is pretty funky, but here's a brief diagram about how it works. So you start off with the cylinder again, except for this time, you insert, insert the cylinder back into itself and wrap it around the top. And so after all of this was coded in um, Fortran and IDL, where we just had to redo all the boundary conditions at the top and bottom. And here are some of the results. So in red, we can see the, rate, we can see the re rates of reconnection on this slide. Um, we can observe that both the behaviors, they, they follow a similar behavior in the sense that they spike up and then slowly drop back down. Um, on the graph, you can see time is in inverse cyclotron frequencies. And um, on the y-axis is the reconnection rate. Um, here we can see the out-of-plane electron current velocity, which is what we want to see. We want to see not the electrons being ejected out of the x-line, which is where they reconnect at great speeds, and that they slow down. Here is the electron current density, which is also good news because it shows that um, it follows the system's magnetic lines. And finally, um, here is the magnetic field. Um, it represents the Hall magnetic field. It's a quadrupolar structure, which is due to the frozen in electrons pulling the magnetic field in the out of plane direction. So here are my conclusions. 
Um, using Fortran and IDL, I coded a new boundary condition to model magnetic reconnection that is both computationally cheap and periodic. Um, it topologically maps a rectangular sheet to a Klein bottle. And although a Klein bottle does not exist in nature, I show that my simulation can model natural um, conditions with a periodicity. And um, with my future work, I want to add a guide field to the system, which will allow us uh, more general simulations, as well as adding a uh, three-dimensional feature. So I'm actually pretty much done with coding with this. Um, results will be out soon, but that's, that's what I'm working on right now. And um, here are my acknowledgement, all acknowledgements, um, Daniel Serrano and uh, Dr. Nick Gross, um, my mentor, Mark Zizdak, um, all my friends standing out here, and my friends and family. Uh, thank you very much.